We've all been sitting with the group about the same amount of time. A year and a half yeah. ago. A year, year and a half ago? A year and a half or two years. Have you stayed about the same number of people? No, it's growing. It's, it's very usually it's been about uh, 15 to 30 people. But uh, that's basically what we've kept it at. Except uh, we're all living t together now. <laughs> None of us say that we're right. I mean, we're just we're just working to try and to find a higher sense of communication. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think it, there is a danger. Uh, people can get hung up on any process. I think any com any community can survive if you can uh, get this one, be strong in this one thing. That everybody is responsible in cleaning up <coughs> after themselves in this sort of this in this area. In other words, I, I really suggest that, like, starting out with a small group of people. Yeah. Because if you overload yourself, you can't turn yourself on to each other. You end up shutting yourself off. <clears throat> um, the strongest thing that I'm trying to project in, in this community is uh, for people to get to a point where they're totally responsible self-sustaining self responsibility. Um, as we pay $5 a month, $500 a month rent. Now, this has been such a great thing, man, because like, uh, this like strawberry fields and like these other places have failed. They make it too easy so people lose their, their sense of uh, responsibility. And what we ask of people for it is very little. Uh, a per we figure it out to a roughly $25 a month with room and board and lights and everything. Yeah. When we first moved in here, everybody was, because they did have their own individual houses, they were very much on their own trip. And now they're recognizing that it's happening right here. And right like now, we're all coming together all the time. And more and more, everything we do, we're doing it together. Is there, is there a different relationship between two people? That's, that's well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Uh, we've been together for a year, and I haven't seen one fist fight or any sort of violence. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've had, you know, maybe I've seen people have a few words, but I've never seen any uh, contact and any violence within the, all the time I've been with all these people. And I think that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing task, to be around each other that much. You know, like, all the time we're around each other, and there's no violence, never. There are, uh, I see a great deal of people here that don't even want to have anything, anything to do with sex because they were so, it was such a power driving force in their past life, so to speak. Yeah, the children here even are. Yeah, they yeah are and they've too. taken acid, and uh, even there's, there is parents that we know they've, they've, they've they had uh, children after they've taken acid, and they're normal and everything. So I think that the younger people have a great sense of survival, of knowing what they have to do to bring the world on. Drinking? Uh, no, because, uh, uh, drinking, uh, uh, well, <laughs> nobody did this. You can, well, it feels like when you take a swallow, you know, it goes down and explodes and <laughs> hits your all, you know, boom, boom, man, man. Uh, I'll be on a drunk trip in a minute. Um, everybody's basically on a spiritual trip, you know, trying to evolve themselves into the whole thing. Do you feel like you're moving together closer? Oh, all the time. Oh, it's so beautiful because the uh, it's so beautiful because yeah, every day <laughs> I look around and I see the communication is spread that much more to spirit. I mean, it's just uh, just incredible. Here I am, kids. I'm just going back there. So must be all right. That's we'll see how has she. Mm. For assassination. She, she. Oh, I'm, I'm really concerned about the absent thing. But, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what can be done, if anything, or if anything should be done. 
Like, I'm, you know, like I'm concerned when I walk down the street. And like one night I was coming home and right down here at Oak Street and uh, Masonic, right out in the middle of the street, it was like five o'clock at night and there was traffic all over and it was going like mad. And there's this poor <laughs> son of a bitch. It was just obvious, you know, what, what was happening with him. You know, here he is. I think the answer is it. You've got to get it to the, to the people through all the media uh, so that all the people get it and not just discriminate, mm -hmm. discriminate so that the, the uh, uh, intellectuals, um, right, definitely. Reader, readers happen to uh, get saved and take this very spiritual trip while everybody else is uh, uh, no, this so is fucked up. It should be realized from all levels of society. Yeah, it's got to really... But if you send out a pamphlet <coughs> describing what kind of a trip a trip should be, aren't you trying to take the world on your trip? No. You, all you have to do is there are certain instructions. Like basic mechanics. Ba basic mechanics of taking an acid trip so that you don't mm -hmm. freak out. Have somebody straight that you can relate to. Take it among friends. Don't go out in the street if you're going to drop acid until you know what you can do. I think there's any Basic, chance it's cool That's nobody's trick. That's just sense. Because it should be recognized as a problem. People are going to freak out and ask because they don't know how to use it. It can be used as a gainful religious experience if it's done with control. This is what the public should understand is that the way to make drugs safe to use is not through uh, restriction but through uh, through education. Yeah, well, like restrictions like putting the dope in a can, in a cookie jar. I'd tell them that they'd better listen to their children or they're going to lose their children, and that they'd be much happier if they followed them and helped them so that they could all grow together. When you learn to be human beings and relate to each other, I hear my friends say the same thing. They're saying, I'm tired of this rat race. It's dog eat dog. I want to go out on a, a desert island you know, I want to get away from it all. These kids hear it, and they're applying it, and they're doing it. And they're in our midst. Now, how do we relate to these, our beloved? In compassion, concern, communication, in the real acceptance of humanity, for humanity. When we can do this, the tensions from which they seek to escape will be minimized, and the tensions which we have shall be minimized, and we'll all know how to relate as one great family. Thank you. And try to explain to them enough about what's happening in us so that they wouldn't be so frightened, and so they wouldn't do things like bash in their children's guitars with fire pokers and tell their children they can't come home for Christmas dinner because their hair is long and all of the things that all of the kids tell me their parents are doing to them. That's about it. Thank you.